thunderstorms throughout the entire week. What is happening? I love coming down here by the water. I almost want to go in. I probably could, to be honest with you. Just not dress the part. So, the Fujifilm X-T4 has to go back today. It doesn't have to, but I'm done with this camera. There's really nothing more I could explore with it. And I just want to give a few quick thoughts and my impressions on this camera after having it for close to three weeks now. And we are actually on the X-T4 right now. So you guys aren't going to be seeing the camera, but if you want to see the setup here. I got the switch pod, X-T4, Rode Video Mic MTG, Fuji 16mm f1.4, Polar Pro, Peter McKinnon Edition Variable ND, which I did drop the other day. The glass is completely fine. Right there, bent a little bit, so I had to take pliers and bend it back. But all is well now, still works perfectly fine. So this is the setup we're rocking with today. So we're just gonna be hanging out outside today and talking about the Fuji X-T4, what I do like, what I don't like, if I recommend it, if I don't recommend it. We'll see where it goes. Roll it. Resume is a heavy weight, yeah. Put it on my back, give me everything, yeah. I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything, yeah. Right off the bat, before we even get into my likes and don't likes on it, do I recommend it? Hell yeah! I definitely recommend this camera for most people. But it's not the camera for me. And let me explain why. First off, let me go over the things that I like about this camera. Super high bit rates. Love it. 10 bit internal, 422, 400 megabits per second, all intra. Oh, I really like this trail. Yeah, I'm coming here from now on. That other spot is dead to me. Serves no purpose to me anymore. That's too bright. That's too backlit. So, high bit rates. Love it. I like to color grade my footage. And to do that, the more information you have in your footage, the better. That along with image stabilization was the big reason why I left Sony. Just couldn't do it. 100 megabits per second, 8 bit, 4K. That's not a lot of information. My iPhone does the same thing, if not more. With this Fuji, we have 10 bit, 400 megabits per second. Colors, image quality. I think the image quality coming out of this camera looks great, especially when you pair it up with the right lens. I'm really enjoying this 16 f1.4. I think it's great. It does equal out to about a 24. But if you pair it up with a nice vlogging grip that has a little bit of extension, I mean, that's plenty wide right there. We got it on the switch pod, which is a little heavy for vlogging. It definitely adds some weight. It's all metal. Image quality looks great. I like F-Vlog. We're shooting in a Turner right now. Not the biggest fan of it. I don't see what all the fuss is, but I don't hate it. And pretty much everything to do with this camera is customizable. You could do whatever you want. You could set it up however you want to set it up. I like the flip screen. I wish it was fully touch screen instead of just partially touch screen. You can't use it in the menu system. On paper, this is one of the greatest cameras to ever come out. Honestly, spec wise, it's amazing. And APS-C wise, if you're talking only the APS-C category cameras, this is the best you can get as of right this second. Nothing is better. You might be wondering, hey Tim, why the hell are you back in the car right now? You were just walking on a trail. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so out of shape. Wait, I go, hold on a second. Just one second. So you may be wondering, why is it that I jumped from the woods to my car, to the studio? I almost perished today, my friends. I almost lost it all. This channel, Vanessa, Kobe, all my camera gear, all my new connections I've been making in the camera YouTube world it was almost taken from me, right from beneath my ball sack. Found a new trail, as you guys know. You just saw it. Took a nice little hike up that trail. Keyword being up 
Walked straight up a hill. Was out of breath. Couldn't even vlog it. Had to turn off the camera. It's a really steep hill. And the only reason why I continued was because I drove quite quite a spell to find that little trail that I didn't even know existed before. And I said, you know what, let's uh let's walk to the top of this hill. Let's do a little mountain climbing before I go and waste this entire trip here. Maybe it levels off at the top, right at the very top of that hill up there. Maybe. So I get to the top of the hill. What's in my back pocket? Napkins to wipe my tears. My tears of fear. So I get to the top of the hill. I catch my breath. I wasn't prepared to do any exercise work. I was carrying a fairly heavy rig with me, even though it's a APS-C camera, not full frame. X-T4 is, doesn't fall into the category of being considered light. I don't know if you could hear that clanking. There's a fairly hefty uh, mini tripod. It's not even mini, it doesn't shrink. So I had a lot of weight on me including this quarantine weight. Catch my breath, press record, continue my vlog. And then I hear a strange sound right in my ear drum hole. I said, oh boy, take a nice little jog. Get about 10 steps. I was being attacked, ambushed, if you may. I had a bee that was out for blood. I'm gonna show you this footage. Damn it, I'm not proud of it. Almost embarrassed by it. But the truth must be showed. Let's play that footage now. <laughs> Holy shit, there is something following me. Buzzing in my damn ear. I still hear him. Laugh it up. Laugh it up, fuckers. Let me explain myself, first off. Let me just explain myself. I'm a city boy. I live in the woods. We have wasps in the city. They're a lot more laid back. These woods wasps, they don't play no games. You don't want that smoke. This thing found me in its neighborhood by myself, deep in the violent woods was of Pennsylvania, decided to pick on me. Decided he wanted to catch a body that day. Today. Not me. Also, I've never been stung by anything in my life. I've been bitten by mesquites and stuff. Never been stung. It would have been my luck. If you know me, if you really know me personally from my whole life, you'd know. It would be my luck that I would get stung, be extremely allergic, swell up, choke, and die in the middle of the woods, eaten afterwards. Possums, raccoons, flesh-eating bees in Pennsylvania. It could have happened. <clears throat> Getting choked up just thinking about it. I think the scariest part of it was I had no defense. When you saw me like this, I didn't know where this bee was coming from. It was very, very Swift. This thing had ankle breaking moves like Iverson and Kyrie mixed together. Kyverson. 
It buzzes here, I look here, it's behind me. Hit me in that ear. Where the hell are you? I don't know because you're too quick for me. You're too quick for me. When you get that fear of I don't know what's attacking me and I can't stop it from attacking me, you run. You run. So I ran. And I'm not ashamed to say I ran. Sure, I look like an idiot. Sure, if I would have seen a group of more people walking towards me on that trail, I would have over-exaggerated and screamed out, it's a swarm of bees, so that they run too. And then I don't feel so stupid. Thankfully, nobody was there. But I'm so out of shape, I almost died. By the time I got to my car, after running back down the hill that I just walked up, trying to hold this camera steady and not dropping it because I have to give it back to B&H tomorrow. Shout out to B&H. Go check them out for all your camera-related gear, products, and availability. Check them out now on bnh.com or bnhphoto.com. Just Google B&H. There's only one. The crazy thing is, is, this isn't even the first time that this has happened to me on camera, on this channel. Roll it. Whoa, is that a fly or a bee? Oh, that's a bee. Here's my running test. This is the first time I've ran in months. That's a freaking bee. Holy sh... <laughs> Yo, that bee just followed me. My goodness. Now in that old clip, you could actually see the wasp because I was on the Asmo Action. There's, it's like an F42 aperture. You could see everything. But today on the Fuji, I was at like... 1.6, 1.8, something like that. But you can see it. I slowed down the frames and you could definitely see it, look. Whatever. Do I feel like a bee? <laughs> yeah, I do. I definitely do. I wonder if Vanessa's still gonna be attracted to me. Babe! Come here. So, after seeing me run for my life, are you still physically attracted to me? Of course. I'd be attracted to you even if you didn't have legs. Even if I didn't have legs. Yeah, and you couldn't run. Thank goodness I did to get the <laughs> hell away from that bee. It's a good girlfriend right there. She looked you guys dead in your eyes and lied right to you. Just to not make me feel like a little wuss boy. I ain't no wuss boy. I ain't no wuss boy, I'll fight you. Go subscribe to her. She makes really good videos. We just did a video, Pepsi vs. Coke challenge. It's pretty damn funny. All right, let's get into the remainder of this video so we can wrap this crazy day up. Fujifilm X-T4. I like a lot of things about this camera. I really do. And again, I completely recommend it to anybody that's saying, hey, I need an APS-C camera. What should I get? What's the best camera? I would say right now, X-T4. Maybe it might just be because of how much I'm loving using the EOS R that there's just something about the X-T4 that is, it's kind of throwing me off. Number one, everybody talks about Sony's menu system. I really don't like Fuji's menu system. And I think it's because of a good thing. I think it's because they just give you so many options. It's just not as quick and easy to just flip back and forth between shooting modes and settings. There's just something about it. It just didn't work for me. Now let's talk about the dials on top. When I first saw this camera, when I first got it in hand, I'm like, this is sleek, man. I'm loving these dials on top. Yeah, not so much, not loving it. They're in the way, kind of, to be honest with you. I don't really use them that much. If you guys haven't seen my EOS R vs. X-T4 video and you are at all concerned about the image stabilization in the X-T4, I'm not just telling you this, go watch that video because some weird stuff happens with this camera with the image stabilization. This right here is the 16 to 80 kit lens, although it's a mighty expensive kit lens. It's like right around $800. 
gotta give this back. It was just a lens cap, but they'll charge me like 80 bucks for this. This 16 to 80 f4 actually is a really good lens, especially for stills. And this is image stabilized. And if you watch that video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The results were horrendous with this stabilized lens versus the non-stabilized lens. I don't know why. I don't know if all of Fuji stabilized lenses kind of counteract with the actual IBIS. And that IBIS works way better in the stills department than it does in the movie mode. Although it wasn't terrible with the 16mm f1.4, but I mean, still not that great. And I kind of almost have the same feeling about the autofocus. Like the autofocus is fast, right? Like, so whatever it knows it's supposed to focus on, it hits it quick, watch. Boom, that was quick. I mean, it's almost like the product display on the ZV-1. Let's try that again. It's very quick. The only problem is it doesn't track you well. So it'll hit, it'll hit your focus spot very, very fast, but it doesn't track you well. Sony is, in my opinion, top of the line. Canon, extremely close second. And then you have, I would say, Olympus and then Fuji. But still, after saying all that, I would still put the Fuji X-T4 as the number one best APS-C mirrorless camera in the game right now, at least as of right now. Thumbs up if you like this video. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate it highly. Enjoy your day, your night, and tomorrow morning. Salute.